The movie begins a young couple lays in bed holding hands as they take a new illegal hire known as Synchronic. While they wait for the amusing outcomes to begin, the man leaves the room and takes the elevator, and in just a few seconds they both start seeing things. In the bed, the girl watches how shrubs and plants appear in the room earlier than the walls fade away and a tribal man appears as well. Now the girl finds herself in the middle of a dense jungle and as the man comes closer, she notices a snake coming toward her too, making her scream. In the elevator, the man sees the walls disintegrating and a wilderness desert appearing in the front of him. When the elevator floor suddenly disappears, the man finds himself falling onto the sand. Meanwhile in the suburbs, best friends Steve and Dennis are working as emergency paramedics. Tonight they respond to a call about a case of overdose and go to a house where they find two people on the floor and a neighbor that says she heard weird noises and someone talking in French. Dennis tends to a bleeding man who is still alive, discovering a bleeding exit wound on his back. Steve tends to the overdose victim and accidentally gets pricked by a syringe before he injects the girl with medicine, making her wake up. The police soon arrive and find a wrapper for Synchronic, concluding that this is simply a result of addicts attacking each other. On their way out, Steve sees a copper coin on the floor and picks it up. While the duo takes the bleeding man to the ambulance, the cops find a bloody sword stuck to a wall. Sometime later, Steve and Dennis take a break during which Steve plays golf. He also examines the coin he found and sees the stamp date as 1721, which he finds curious. Worried about the prick, later Steve has himself checked for HIV, and the doctor recommends that Steve goes through a complete medical checkup. The following day, Steve goes to his friend's family picnic to celebrate Dennis's daughter's birthday. Steve sees Dennis' eldest daughter Brianna sitting alone on a boulder and decides to approach her, knowing that Brianna sees him as the cool uncle. Brianna tries to tell Steve about what she's currently going through, but she is interrupted by Steve's phone call. That night at work, Dennis and Steve make their way to the latest emergency, which includes somebody having burned to death. Officers inform them that they're unsure how the victim died because they saw no other signs of fire nearby. They did find an empty synchronic wrapper as well as an out-of-place doorknob that has melted. Some time later, Steve gets a brain scan at the hospital and discovers he has a tumor, which leaves him shaken. Afterward Dennis and Steve go to their next case, which turns out to be the couple at the hotel. The woman has a snake bite on her knee and is in a state of shock, only speaking to mutter her boyfriend's name. They find another synchronic packet at the scene, and the animal control worker tells them they've searched for the snake to no avail. He also tells them that he recognizes the snake bite and it could have only come from a snake that hasn't been seen in the area for decades. Then Steve finds a bag from the shop where the victim got the synchronic. At that moment, the hotel caretaker tells them he heard a loud bang from the elevator shaft, so Dennis goes to investigate. When he opens the elevator doors, he finds the woman's boyfriend at the bottom of the shaft, dead but still looking happy about it. On their way to the hospital, Dennis notices Steve taking medicine more frequently. Steve meets with his doctor, who tells him that the tumor is cancerous and affects his pineal gland. There aren't exact numbers, Steve may have six weeks left or several decades. It depends on how he'll react to the medication and therapy. Later, Steve considers telling Dennis the news but decides against it. Dennis plays basketball with Brianna, trying to connect with her. He's worried that he might have become a little distant as a father, but Brianna tells him that she's not going through anything terrible, she's just worried that she still doesn't know what to do with her life. In the evening, Dennis meets Steve at the bar and gifts him a lamp for his birthday. Then Dennis opens up about the doubts he has about his marriage, confessing he's unsure if being a family man is what he wants. He looks at Steve's lifestyle as a bachelor and can't help but feel jealous sometimes. Dennis chooses that moment to finally confront Steve about all the medicine he's been taking, worried that Steve may have an addiction, but Steve doesn't tell him about the tumor. Instead he just says he can take care of himself. The next day, the duo arrives at a house party after another call about an overdose and they find two teenagers. One is dead on the floor and the other is speaking incoherently. They ask her if there are others, and she says a girl named Brianna was with them. Terrified to hear his daughter's name, Dennis calls his wife and learns that Brianna isn't at home, confirming it's his daughter who has gone missing. Now that a loved one has fallen victim to Synchronic, Steve decides to visit the shop that sells it and buys all the remaining packets. A man sees all this and follows Steve to his car to offer to buy the Synchronic from him, even offering much more than the store's price. However Steve tells the man off and drives away. At Dennis' house, 
he and his wife are contacting the authorities and printing out flyers for Brianna. The wife is devastated, always thinking they aren't doing enough. That night, Steve is lying in bed with his dog hawking when he suddenly hears a noise coming from the living room. Taking a bat with him, he goes to investigate, and when he opens the closet he finds the man from the shop. Steve threatens to beat him, but the man confesses he was the one that made Synchronic. His name is Dr. Kermani, he works as a chemist, and he has been trying to buy back the Synchronic that is being sold all over the country. His job consists of making synthetic uppers by changing the molecular structure of legal medications and turning them into something that mimics illegal substances. Synchronic was supposed to be a simple way to have fun, but he accidentally made something that allows people to travel through time. Apparently Synchronic distorts the fabric of space-time, allowing people to cross to different periods. Because it impacts a person's pineal gland, adults with a developed pineal gland can only appear as shadows or ghosts in the past but younger people with an underdeveloped pineal gland can travel entirely and even get stuck in a different time. Kermani has been spending his time tracking down all the synchronic to destroy it, and the shop had been his final stop. Skeptical, Steve tells him that he flushed the synchronic down the toilet and orders Kermani to leave. Believing all synchronic had been eliminated, Kermani leaves, but it's then revealed that Steve didn't flush the synchronic, he actually only threw them in the trash. The following day, Steve is at his chemotherapy session and as soon as he finishes, he immediately feels the side effects and starts vomiting randomly. While he works, Steve is exhausted all the time. Suddenly Dennis gets a call from the hospital, informing him there's a missing supply of morphine. He immediately suspects Steve because he still doesn't know about the tumor and he has noticed the changes in Steve's health. Soon they get another call about a man with a broken leg, and when they arrive at the location, they discover the victim speaks a different language. They still start treating the man, and Dennis begins giving Steve instructions. This annoys Steve and he says he knows how to do his job, but Dennis replies he doesn't, implying Steve came to work after consuming morphine. As they head out, they get into an argument that starts with a few insults but soon escalates into throwing fists at each other, so the ambulance driver has to break them apart. Steve leaves, going home alone. Later that night, Steve examines the coin he got from the crime scene, and the sight of the date convinces him to try Synchronic. Only a few minutes need to pass before bright lights begin filling the living room, and when he turns, he sees a swampland slowly appearing around him as his living room walls disappear. Eventually the living room disappears completely and Steve is left in a swamp. He looks around, smelling and touching everything, barely believing what he's seeing. There's a man stalking him from a distance muttering a prayer but Steve's attention is on a crocodile suddenly approaching him. He backs away as he notices he's also starting to disappear, and at that moment, the stalker is revealed to be a Spanish conquistador. The man starts charging at Steve with his sword, who doesn't know what to do because he's caught between the crocodile and a crazy dude. But just when the Spaniard is bringing his sword down on him, Steve appears back in his living room, finding Hawking staring at him very confused. Steve almost dismisses what happened as a dream until he sees a slash mark on the floor from the conquistador's sword. Finding all this fascinating, Steve decides to document his experience with a video camera, explaining that Synchronic allows him to go back in time for seven minutes and that he suspects that the same happened to Brianna. He takes another dose and slowly disappears, then he shows up in the middle of a frozen wasteland, meaning he immediately starts freezing. Steve notices a figure approaching him, but at that moment he collapses from the cold. Seven minutes pass and Steve immediately reappears in his living room still shivering. He reaches the conclusion that the time period he gets to visit is dependent on his location in the living room, so he tries again in the same spot. This time he puts on a coat and carries some firewood. When he shows up at the frozen landscape, he manages to start a fire and watches the figure approaching him and pointing a spear. When the person is close enough, Steve finally sees he's a caveman. He touches the caveman's spear, and once the caveman lowers it, Steve offers him a seat. The men sit across from each other for a moment while the seven minutes pass and Steve slowly returns to the present. The following morning, Dennis and his wife are having more trouble with their marriage, because Brianna's disappearance has made their already existing problems worse. Meanwhile Steve hears from the radio that Dr. Kermani has ended things for himself. Later that night, Steve thinks about the fact the paramedics found the copper coin, the sword, and the doorknob in the houses they visited, meaning he should be able to carry things too. Deciding to experiment, he takes another synchronic and as he starts disappearing, he embraces Hawking. He successfully brings Hawking back with him, 
but unfortunately they've arrived at a period where most of the population is incredibly racist. They've popped up in a house where a man chases them out, so Steve and Hawking run away, only to find everyone in the town looking at them in the same way. Seven minutes pass, but to Steve's shock, he doesn't disappear. He decides to return to the house where he and Hawking appeared in, taking another synchronic before sneaking inside. Sadly the man discovers them and calls his friends, who appear in very infamous white drapes. Chaos ensues in the living room, and Steve gets separated from Hawking. As Steve tries to grasp Hawking's leash, the men are about to shoot Steve, but suddenly he reappears in his living room without Hawking. At that moment Steve hears Hawking whimpering and runs to the window, only to see Hawking slowly fading away. This incident helps Steve reach two conclusions. If seven minutes go by and you are not at the place where you first appeared you'll be stuck in the past, and he needs to grab the object he wants properly because he only brought back Hawking's leash. The worst part is that he can no longer retrieve Hawking because he doesn't have enough synchronic left. Afterward Steve decides to go to the university dorms where Brianna went missing. Earlier one of the teenagers in the incident said Brianna was seen sitting at a spot before disappearing, and Steve tries to travel at that exact location. He ends up in the middle of a forest where several men conduct a ritual and mistake him for a spirit they've summoned. They immediately swarm him, and Steve begins running away in the direction he came from. Fortunately he's able to grab a lawn chair and gets transported back to the present with no issues. At that moment the teen who told him about Brianna shows up and clarifies that Brianna had wandered off. She didn't actually disappear from that specific spot. Sometime later Steve meets with Dennis at a bar and Dennis confesses that he may be getting a divorce. He feels guilty about not fulfilling the promise he made to his wife on their wedding day and explains that she's loved him unconditionally but he doesn't think he has been returning the love. He says that Brianna was the only one keeping their marriage afloat, and now that she's gone, he feels that nothing is holding them together. Steve then reveals that he'd exchange his bachelor life for Dennis's stable married life in a heartbeat, which surprises Dennis. Then Steve finally reveals the truth about his brain tumor, which leaves Dennis greatly upset. Steve tries to calm him down by telling him he's been doing chemotherapy, and the two reconcile, prompting Dennis to reveal that it was actually their ambulance driver who had been stealing the morphine. Later at a cemetery, Steve shows Dennis video footage of the evidence of Synchronic's effects, which leaves Dennis worrying about Brianna being stuck in the past. Then Dennis realizes that Brianna may have left a message for them to decipher in the present, which makes Steve remember the small boulder at the park where they had sat together. The duo rushes to the boulder and finds only one word, always. This must be where Brianna disappeared, so with only two pieces of Synchronic left, Steve decides to go back for her. This time Steve gets transported to the American Civil War, and there are bombs and gunshots going off all around him. Steve immediately runs to a bunker and finds a mound of dead soldiers as he keeps calling out to Brianna. He has no choice but to crawl through piles of bodies until he finally hears Brianna calling him back. The two of them finally reunite and Steve gives Brianna his last synchronic, explaining that they have to reach the boulder in seven minutes or else they'll be stuck in the past forever. The duo starts running toward the boulder, only for Steve to get shot. Brianna has to help him move, but at that moment a random soldier appears and calls Steve a slave as he holds them at gunpoint. This causes Steve seven minutes to run out, meaning he's stuck in this time period. However he still can save Brianna, so he makes a plan. When he sees a mine in front of the soldier, he baits the man to get him to step on it, but sadly the soldier steps over it as he gets equipped to shoot. Suddenly Brianna disappears and a huge explosion shakes Steve and the soldier, causing the man to lose his balance and step on the landmine, which explodes him to pieces. Steve then rises to his toes and sits on the boulder while within the gift time, Brianna reappears and reunites with her father. Then they see Steve appearing ghostly at the boulder before fading into nothing, stuck in the past. Thanks for watching please like share and subscribe.